Awesome. Well, Greg Gillies, thanks so much for uh, joining us on the Tiling Connect uh, podcast. I really appreciate you um, giving us some time today. And uh, no dramas. Yeah, really looking thanks for forward. having me. Hey, you're welcome. Looking forward to um, looking forward to finding out more about you and um, backgrounds and and what you do and and all that sort of stuff. So, I, I, you know, I'd love to just hand the floor over to you over to you to begin with and um, find out uh, a little bit more about you. So, if you'd like to introduce yourself and and your business and and uh, yeah, that that would be terrific. Yeah, totally. So, <clears throat> my name's Greg Gillies. Originally grew up in a small country town of New Zealand called Tapanui <clears throat> with 800 people. I'm now 45 and it's still got 800 people. So it's one of those country towns, but it was oh, a good yeah. humble upbringing. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, yeah, good humble upbringing, good ethics, small country town, nice and safe. Everybody knew everybody and everybody's kind of protected each other. Um, I had a big love for rugby, like a lot of Kiwi kids did. So I started playing rugby at the age of five. That was kind of my passion and, and played rugby for over 20 years. Um, went through to boarding school at the age of 14 to a big boys only school called Kings High School in Dunedin. Um, made New Zealand age grade rugby. Um, all the leadership qualities at school from prefect to head of the boarding hostel and all that sort of stuff. <clears throat> but what I... Um, what I didn't realize at the time that I that I know now after the work that I've done on myself is when I actually went off to boarding school, I didn't realize that I had all of these deep internal programs around feeling like I was um, kind of leaving the family or being kicked out of the family or not wanted or unloved and things like that, even though it was kind of mutually agreed that I would go to boarding school just at that age, quite vulnerable. So mm. I went off to boarding school. And I just absolutely hustled and grinded and worked my butt off and, and everything that I could possibly imagine to get kind of validation and to, and to prove myself. And that's why I played such good footy because I've kind of proved myself on the rugby field as quite a strong, aggressive young man. Yeah. Um, but, but that strong, aggressive young man had a lot of bottled up anger from his, from his earlier age. I used to fight a lot with my dad. Um, but we get on like a house on fire now. Uh, it was just a, such a stubborn, driven young man. Um, and all of those people out there that have got teenage children, they'll know that the clashes can be real when it when it's like a mirror of yourself looking back, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so I took this kind of can-do, hustle, grind attitude from those younger years into the corporate world, and I was really, really successful. Um but I didn't manage myself very well. I didn't manage my emotions very well. I just pushed myself as hard as I possibly could. And I did everything. I did everything to the extreme. So I would work hard. I would play hard, but I would drink hard. And that was a lot mm. from the rugby culture as well. And it was fun when I was younger, but it didn't serve me as I was getting older. Um, and I went from drinking to have fun to drinking for every reason under the sun. And I started having a bit of a problem with alcohol and I would drink when I was up I'd drink when I was down I'd just drink for the sake of drinking and it become such an identity in my life that it was kind of it was limiting me from reaching my own potential so here I am kind of sabotaging myself but pushing myself so hard to achieve massive success that I was just wearing myself down and then got married had kids and all of those additional pressures and demands and traveling for corporate. And then after 20 years of corporate, starting my own businesses and then the pressures of demands of business and fending for a family and everything, which most of your audience will probably relate to. Yeah. I was just carrying the weight of the world on my shoulders and I was just wearing myself down. I was burning myself out. I was drinking to escape myself. I was drinking to be happy mm. and I just wasn't. And I was hiding it. Because I, I was Greg Gillies, the successful rugby player and had the nice house and the nice cars and all that sort of stuff. But on the inside, I was just deteriorating and spiraling out of control. Mm. Um, but I maintained that facade that I had it all together to the outside world. And, and that, was kind of, that was kind of what led me into a breakdown. Um, so in 2015, 
Um, I was actually living in Singapore with my family. We were over there on a big, I won a big, big contract for a big corporate that I was working for. And I was over there and it ended really fast. Um, didn't know it was about to end. It was no fault of my own. We were growing at 6,000% year on year. So we were wow. absolutely killing it in business. But when it ended, it was like the whole world just come crushing down on me. And I just felt like a complete failure. I was stuck in Singapore with three kids under the age of five. I had no job to go to. I didn't know what I was going to do next. And I just went back to what I always do. And I just drank myself through it to try and avoid the pain. Mm. And when we finally got back to Australia, I started my own business. And within three to six months, I had a massive breakdown. Wow. I couldn't hand I couldn't handle the stress. I couldn't handle the mental pressure, the the self talk, the narrative, and then the drinking on top from highs and lows. Everything over the years just come crashing down, and I had a serious breakdown. And this time it wasn't she'll be right, dust it off. I'll get through this. I'll I'll find a solution. I was in bad shape, so I surrendered. I turned to my wife and I said, I need to get help. And that's kind of a journey from being a young man in a small country town right through to trying to become successful and being successful in sports, business, you name it, to completely hitting a brick wall and crashing and burning mm -hmm. and having to, having to take a completely different path to heal myself, to find myself, and to not fall back into those old patterns that I was in. Well. Wow. Yeah. Mate, that's that's an incredibly raw, honest, um, and open, um, uh, transparent introduction I've ever had uh in one of these podcasts. So thank you for sharing, buddy. That that uh yeah, uh, I felt that. Um, you know, having yeah. three kids myself, I know um what um you know what your family means to you and and uh wow, that yeah. Insane. Yeah. So what the thing is the thing is we we as men, we work so hard for our families but it disconnects us from our families because we're trying so hard to give them everything that we want to give them. And then this was causing me so much concern. So part of my breakdown was my wife, Tracy, she had had enough. She was just yeah. like, sort yourself out or I'm taking the kids back to New Zealand and leaving you. So that was on top of it as well. So here I am trying to build a new business. Haven't dealt with any of my shit for the past 20, 30 years. I was still drinking, I was hustling, I was grinding, I was promising her I'd be better and I wasn't and it was everything. Yeah. Just, just, just hit me like a ton of bricks. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and I remember um, when you and I spoke initially and we connected and I connected with you through LinkedIn, right? And that I started yeah. following a lot of your content and really digesting it and was starting to really fall in love with what you were posting and reading a lot of the articles. And, and um, when I reached out to you directly, uh, you mentioned to me that when, when we spoke that you've also come from a, a trade background as well. So you've done quite a little bit of that in your, in your past as well. Um, well it, I, I just had a blue collar upbringing. Yeah. So yeah. small country town, um, I, I did go into corporate and I was white collar, but I yeah. come from a blue blue collar background, right? Roll up your sleeves, um, get it done, jack of all trades, um, and worked with a lot of clients in the trades and construction. I still work with a lot of a lot of a lot of my a lot of my high end one to one clients now. Mm. Most of them are in trades. They own big construction yeah. businesses. They own timber manufacturing businesses, print company, uh, painting companies. So I really relate to the bloke, you know what mm. I mean? Footy, beer, work hard, provide for the family. Yeah. And I resonate with those guys because when I tell my story, it's kind of their story at the same time. I'm not yeah. saying that everybody's having a breakdown, but they're all trying their asses off to try and be the best that they can be, mm. but they can only be the best of the resources they have available, like what they've been taught growing up. Yeah. So I, I, I was just the best of what I knew, mm. but there was so much I didn't know. Yeah. And what happens is we become really one dimensional because society conditions men in particular, especially the driven man, like the guy, the guy who goes out to, <clears throat> to be above average. A lot of them will start their own business because they want to be their own boss. They want to create their own destiny. They want to create time and financial freedom. 
our programming from a young age, from years and years, well, thousands of years, right? This is generational programming in men. Mm. Is if we go out there and become successful, then everything else will fall into place. Mm. The wife will be happy. The family will be happy. You'll be happy. There'll be love, happiness, all that sort of stuff. But so many men, the harder they work and the more successful they become, those other areas of their life, like their health and their relationships, become really dysfunctional. Mm. And they don't understand how or why because they're only following what they've been taught. And that was me to a T. Mm. And my solution to fix anything was to work harder. Yeah. Was to break through, was to push through. Competitive guy, right? Rugby guy. Yeah. yeah. And that was my solution. But every mm. time I did that, I got further into this hole. Yeah. Which was just putting more load and pressure on myself until I burnt myself out. Mm. Yeah. And, and look, a lot of I, look, I, I feel that. I mean, a lot of men that I know, a lot of friends and, and um, colleagues, and that are very much in the same um, same category. Uh, they, my father, um, he was a ex police officer uh, here in Australia. Um, yeah, you know, worked in the seventies and eighties, um, and part of the nineties in, in the police force. Spent twenty five years in the police force, and was uh, he, he what he drilled into us me and the three other boys were, was just, you'll get everywhere in life as long as you work hard, you know, your, your nose to the grindstone, um, you know, whatever you do, just keep going at it and um, you'll, you, you'll make something of yourself basically. And, um, and he would have learned, he would have learned some of that, if not all of that from his father, who, you know, my, my grandfather migrated from Poland in uh, 1946. So not long after the war. So there was, there was that, the, the, again, that generational, um, history of hard work and, and that'll that'll make it all okay um but it's not always a, it's not always 100%. not always the case if, if probably, well pro- probably never the case the, well here's the thing right the world's evolved so much but men haven't because mm. men have got so much more opportunity they've got so much more knowledge but at the deepest level of our unconscious programming we're still running programs that were passed down from our grandfather yeah now Our grandfathers, when they come back from the war or they might have immigrated or whatever, that was the the world then. Mm. The wives didn't work. They only needed one income. It wasn't like the world that we live in now. Yeah. So men have still got that work hard, hustle, grind, provide for your family, but we're in a completely different world Mm. where it's harder, it's faster, there's more information, there's more comparison and judgment. It's not simple anymore. Even these things here, yeah. the, amount of, the amount of mental health dysfunction from the amount of stimuli and information that we are receiving on the constant, which is becoming the biggest addiction in humanity, and we're seeing it in kids now, mm. men, men are kind of like cavemen where if we have a task to do and that is like our honor, we are very, very successful, but we now need to be multidimensional. We now live in an age where we need to be really emotionally available for our kids. Mm. We were never taught emotional. We were never taught how to no. be emotional from our grandfather and our father. It was just like, really? Yeah. <laughs> Harden up, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> have, have a have a beer, bury it. Yeah. So, so there's so many parts of us that haven't been explored because we're only doing what we know what to do from the men that have taught us from our past. Yeah. But we now live in a world and I don't need to convince anybody listening to this podcast, but we have to be so much more. There's females are becoming more dominant in the business world. Mm. Men are, men are actually starting to get really confused around what their place is. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And and there there are tons of other podcasts out there that talk exactly about that topic between men and women and the changes that are going on out there in the world at the moment. Uh, I can't keep up with it. There's, there's just so much information and trying to work out um, which pathway do I go down? What, what what do I choose and how do I choose it? And what effect is um, that going to have on my friends and family if I choose to go down down a specific path? So. And the biggest thing, the biggest thing with men, whether they want to admit it or not, but I've worked with hundreds of married businessmen. So I know their psychology deeper than they know themselves. Many men run their lives from fear, mm. fear of failure, fear of not being good enough, fear of letting anybody down, fear of everything. That's what drives us. Yeah. yeah. So when somebody says that you have to be 
this, that, or the other thing, and we don't know how to be that, we would often just shut down from it in case we tried and failed and it was a mistake. We don't want to make mistakes. Yeah. yeah? So we actually don't naturally open ourselves up to change until we are forced to. Mm. And most men, it's either they lose their money, they lose their health, or they lose their wife. And that's the wake up call. Yeah. Or they see it coming and they go, holy shit, I have to change. Outside of that, they'll ignore it. They'll keep the mask on. They'll drink a beer and pretend that there's nothing wrong, but they know that there's a lot going wrong. Yeah. yeah? Deep yeah. down. They know. Mm. Because they, their, and... their mind is racing. They're just they're questioning, they're doubting. They go, should I do this? Should I, should I, should I, should I? It's just we, we are now an overthinking society. Mm. And the mind is constantly on and it's too much. Yeah. How do you how do you go about switching off? Like if you don't mind sharing, how do you go about switching off and putting a real divide between, you know, your work and your life now? What's what what are some of the key things that you um have implemented? Yeah, totally. So I've I've done an immense amount of work on myself, right? A lot of deep healing, a lot of past programming. I've done inner child healing. I've cleared parental programming. I've cleared, I've literally reprogrammed my unconscious brain so I don't carry all of those beliefs that sent me into a hole last time. Yeah. So I don't need to fight or struggle to be different now. I'm just different. It's like a yeah. computer program that's had all the cobwebs flushed out and now it operates better. Yeah. And in doing that, I've just got a massive amount of self-awareness for myself. Like I'm really connected to myself. I know myself. I respect myself. I've been sober for five and a half years. I don't drink anymore. So one of my biggest mate. vices, yeah, cheers. So one of my biggest vices that I learned growing up, because my dad was a big drinker, his dad was a big drinker, and every man in my life growing up and rugby was all around alcohol. I was mm. a massive drinker. And it did not serve me one iota. I had fun when I was young, but honestly, it didn't serve me. It ruined my health. It slowed me down. It was a waste of money. So just making big change. But mm -hmm. those big changes start with small changes on a daily basis, and it's the compounding. So this is mm -hmm. another thing about the, the male egoic minds programming. We try and chase big change. And when we receive big change, it makes us feel fulfilled, yep. but it's not sustainable because then we want the next big change and we move the goalposts. And it's like, what's next? The challenge with men is most men aren't fulfilled. They're not content and they don't have any inner peace is because mm. they're constantly in the cycle of pushing the goalposts. What's next? More, more, achieve more, achieve more. And then they get on this hamster wheel. Some of our clients have got more money than they'll ever spend in their entire life, but they're still on the hamster wheel Yeah. because it's the programming that's driving them. Mm. So they're unfulfilled, they're deeply unhappy, and that starts affecting their relationships. Mm. So I had to do all of this inner programming work. And once I started to reprogram my mind, then I started doing kinesiology to heal my body and my liver and my digestive system from all the damage from the alcohol and then the bad food that I was eating. Then I did a lot of energy healing. Then I did a lot of spiritual work. And my wife is a very gifted energy healer and spiritual work. So I had to work on all levels of myself. But this is over years. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. There's no quick pill. It's no. kind of like I had my breakdown when I was 39. And my first mentor, my first spiritual healing coach said to me, you are not going to get where you want to be in the next couple of months. You need to heal and unwind 39 years of bad programming and habits. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, so just work on the small things. So a lot of men, they know they need to meditate. They know they need to eat clean. They know they need to do all of these things, but they struggle not to do it because when the mind is stressed, it makes the body stressed. And when the body's stressed, the autonomic nervous system's out of balance. And yeah. when the autonomic nervous system's out of balance, we overproduce cortisol. And when we overproduce cortisol, it puts our digestive system out of balance and our body craves fast burning foods like sugar, alcohol, fatty foods, and all that sort of stuff, mm. right? So a lot of people are in this mental imbalance and this physical imbalance and they're restless. 
They can't relax. They can't be patient. It's because their body is in this constant state of survival. And this is a lot of men. Because a lot of men have pushed themselves so hard mentally and physically, their body is now in a constant state of survival. When you're in the state of survival, if you don't do the deep inner healing, it's really hard to get out of it. Mm -hmm. And this is why it's not a quick fix. No, well, I mean, six years. I mean, you, you mentioned you were diagnosed at 39. So um, that's a, a long time, right? It's not something that's going to happen overnight. And I think a lot that would scare a lot of people straight away. If um, And I'm sure you share that with, you know, people when they're going through their journey that, you know, that's that potentially could be the time frame you're looking at. And um, yeah, that, that, that would be um, daunting to, um, to comprehend. Yeah. So the thing is, the, the, the journey that Tracy and I have been on and what we've done on ourselves and what we've learned and our skills and our gifts and how where we're at after six years of doing this evolutionary work or even longer than that, we can actually get our clients to go through the same transformation in six months. Wow. So it's, it's kind of like hyper condensing and bringing our stuff together. And, and that's what the Evolve CEO is all about. We help successful businessmen who have sacrificed so much to build the business and the wealth and the success at the detriment of their relationships and their, and their health. We help mm. them heal and balance and align and elevate every area of their life. But it all starts with mental, physical, and spiritual healing. Mm -hmm. And when you heal the mind, body, and the soul, it just opens up a whole new world of possibility. And our clients are just gone way beyond the levels of success. Mm -hmm. Some of them are pivoting. Some of them are exiting their business for tens of millions. Some of them are scaling their business, but they now know what their passion and purpose is. They're now, they're now working towards something so much greater, but they had to go through the healing first. Yeah. Because if they didn't go through the healing, they would have just repeated the old patterns, which would have given them the same results. Yeah. Yeah. So, so our, our preach to everybody, you don't need more information. Mm. To be fair, you need to get rid of a lot of it. Yeah. We've got too much information and that's why everybody's minds are so stressed. And all of the stress throughout our whole body and the dysfunction is because of the stressed mind. Mm. Now, granddad didn't have a stressed mind. He went to work, he came home, he sat on his throne, he had his dinner and he had a whiskey. Yeah. What do you have to stress about? Exactly. <laughs> we... We don't have that luxury, but no. we still operate from the unconscious monkey brain like our granddad did. Yeah. No wonder why men are in so much conflict. But then we don't want to share or show that because it feels like a weakness. And we've been taught not to be vulnerable mm. and to just harden up and be a man. So we, we bury it. We hold it down. Mm. And if we bury it and hold it down for too long, it usually blows up around the people we love the most. And we yeah. get angry or we lose it to our wife or our kids. And then we feel guilty. And then we just, and it's just this constant, right? Yeah. And this is why men are so confused. They're just like, fuck. Do you mind yeah. if I swear on it? Nah, it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll work that out later. <laughs> but so, mate, it's, it's, it's the episode that calls for it. So, yeah. So it's, it's complex. Yeah. Be because, because we, we, we need to do the healing and we need to become really, really self-aware so that we can understand what got us to where we are. And the ego tells us a story and tells us that everything that we think is true. Mm. And 99% of it's not. It's yeah. a narrative that we created and a story that we follow that we think is true. But over the years, we become more disconnected, more unhappy. And I'm not saying everybody's unhappy. No, no. But I can tell you that 99% of people, especially men, they're still striving for more. They mm. know that they want more to do more, but not all of them know what is that. Yeah. So they just keep hustling and grinding until one day they hopefully will find it. Or more importantly, what it actually means. Like what what is what does more mean? Like what is that? You know, what is what is yeah. that? Yeah, you know, I mean you can look at it tangi tangibly as a as an asset, but what does it mean for you as a person? Like um you're one of the things that I, I noticed I, I read through when I was doing some research um, on yourself and your wife and the business was that um, there was a massive part of, you know, healing and everything that you do. And, and you've talked about it a lot today. So what, what would be the thing that if someone wanted to make change or was identifying in themselves that they needed to take a next step, what, what, what do they do? Like what, what's next for them? If they go, Hey, look, I'm, 
I'm at that point where it's a light bulb moment. I'm ready to, to make some change. Yeah. So I'm not going to turn around and say what everybody else says that you can read in a book. Um, they'd say eat well, exercise well, meditate, sleep well, take time out. The reason why I'm not going to say that is because the people that actually need to heal, it frustrates them that they know what they need to do, but they mm. can't stick to it because they're in this state of stress and the state of stress and this mental, this mental stress it makes it really, really, really hard to stick to things that are good for you because the body's out of balance and it's craving and it's just trying to survive. Does that make sense? 100%. So, so my journey was I, I become aware that I needed to do something different, but mine was off the back of a breakdown. And what I'm trying to do is educate men. Don't hit the brick wall before you do something about it. Yes. Do something about it because you know deep inside yourself that you're not being the best version of yourself. You're not truly happy. You're not fulfilled. You're not content. Mm -hmm. And you want to be better, right? You want to be more present with your family. You want to be happy with your business, your success, all that sort of stuff. I believe the first step is everybody needs to reprogram the brain. It's because the brain is what is driving you and not allowing you to slow down and be happy with what you've currently got. Yeah. It's this unconscious conditioning that has been programmed into us from the earliest age and even all of the narratives and everybody we come around as you, you just work hard. You just work hard. You just push through. Yeah. Yeah. At what cost? Exactly. Yeah. Now I work hard. 100%. I work hard, but I work hard on laser focused things that are going to move the needle towards my highest passion and purpose. I don't work hard anymore just to get more money. Yeah. See, I used to work really hard just for more money. Money was everything. Mm. It was just money, 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 money. Money would solve all of my problems. But because of the reason why I was chasing the money and what I would sacrifice to get the money, even when I got a lot of money, I was never happy. Yeah. And I needed more. It's not enough. Yeah. I needed more. And then I would do something stupid and I would lose the money because I had a belief system that I didn't deserve to be wealthy because I picked that up as a child. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So if we don't get rid of these programs, how can we change our behaviors? Because it's the beliefs that drive the behaviors that drive our actions that drive our, that drive what happens. Yeah. 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 If you don't change the unconscious programs, the computer that drives you, mm. you, it's going to be pretty hard to change. You just people, a lot of blokes are just living off willpower mm. and willpower runs out real easy. Yeah. You're tired, you're exhausted, you're sleep deprived, you're overworking. Willpower's gone. Mm. Most blokes will give their willpower to their business. And when they come home, there's nothing left in the tank. And they yeah. wonder why the connection and communication with their wife declines. Yeah. It's a vicious cycle. So it starts with reprogramming the mind because the mind is the highest organizational structure that controls everything. And if you've got a stressed mind, you've got a stressed body. If you've got a stressed body, you're not going to be able to be present. Mm. And if you can't be present, you can't truly love yeah. because the only way that you can truly love is to buy, be truly present. Yeah. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. I see it. Um, I see it a lot today in a lot of the work that I do during my day job and I'm out there on job sites with tiling contractors and other trades from time to time. And I, and I was on one yesterday and I can't even imagine what a lot of these traders have had to go through the last couple of years. I know everyone around the world and locally has had their own personal battles and struggles and challenges with COVID and the pandemic and the lockdowns and, and it's been massive and, and I've spoken to a few people in, in different areas of uh, mental um, health and wellness and uh, you know unfortunately I think we're going to see some pretty tough times in front of us we haven't quite seen um, uh, you know the worst of it yet and um, I know that the the tradies that I have a touch point with you know they've been uh, they've had, you know been working really really hard the last couple of years and been dealing dealing with some really really challenging times. Um, you know you've got inflation, you've got the pressures and stress of trying to get these projects finished on time and on budget, and every budget's blowing out all over the place. 
Um, totally. And um, that's, it's been significantly impacting a lot of families because of the extra workload that they've had to carry um, over that two year period. And even, you know, I've been on a few job sites in the last few weeks and you can just see the guys on the sites. They're just, they seem they're a bit, they're tired. They're a bit worn out. Um, totally. You know, people are, people are, you know, pulling their hair out. Um, you know, they're looking for solutions on job sites quicker, faster and better. And they might not always be available. So um, I'm really glad to be able to talk, be to be able to talk to you today because um, it would be excellent to be able to connect, you know, some of these guys, if not all of them or any of them, with with what you do. Because um, yeah, I think they're going to need some help. Yeah, totally. And that industry in particular, because I've got I've got clients in the construction and in the property business and the general public is just thinking well there's been a housing boom they're doing okay all the everything's going up they're making more money yeah but but what you're exactly what you're saying that's the superficial stuff people aren't seeing what's actually going on underneath and these Mm. guys are burnt out they haven't even recovered from the traumatic uncertainty of covid and then all of a sudden everything just went boom and it was just on and they just they're just trying to keep up with it um we just finished building a new house and and i know the company that we're working for the amount of additional hours to try and run the logistics to finish a house and get all the sub trades and then there's a lack of resources and all that sort of stuff these guys are under massive mental stress mm. But they can't just turn off and say, well, I just don't want to work because I'm feeling stressed. So they're just in that grind and that's grinding them down. And where that shows up is in their health and in their relationships and all that sort of stuff. Some of them might be putting more money in the bank account, but there comes a time where they realize it's not about the money and they feel Mm. a bit stuck. Yeah. 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 And everybody's looking kind of, what do I do next? What, what, where am I meant to look? But everywhere they look, they're seeing everybody the same. Mm. Yeah, that's it's right. A, it's, a, it's a very uncertain time for people's mental health in particular, yeah. mental and emotional health. Yeah, and look, a lot yeah. of the guys that we deal with, and we deal with a wide variety of people in my day job, but a lot of these, uh, a lot of them are sole traders. So mm. they, don't get, they don't get the option to choose to not turn up to work one day. So they've had to do this, you know, for their entire lives. And then... Um, through COVID, it's been that plus amplified 4,000%. Um, and then we're at the other end and now we've got a backlog of work. So, yeah, I, I feel for them. And, um, yeah, it's um, it's been a tough couple of years. And um, hopefully, uh, you know, we can start to see some relaxation of things in, in 2023 where there might be a little bit more of m- more breathing space. But certainly I think people need to reach out to um, people like yourself and and, you know, go through that process of, of, um, you know, taking some really positive proactive steps towards their future health. Totally. There is never a more important time for people to slice a a section of the day out for themselves. Now, Mm. some guys might go to the gym, which is nice, but I'm talking about silent time. I'm talking about time to silence the mind because that's ultimately what they need to do. If you can't silence the mind, you definitely need to move the body. You need to exercise. You need to get rid of all of that built up energy and kind of emotion through the body through exercise. Um, But unfortunately, um, a lot of, a lot of those tradies, they will, their, their release at the end of the day will be a couple of beers. Yeah. Yeah. And that might feel good in the moment, but the compounding effect of that, it's just masking the pressure that they are under. So they really need to have a mental, physical, and spiritual health pro- process. They need to have some silent time, even if they get out half an hour before work and, I don't know, go for a walk, go for a surf, do something, depending on where they live, physical yeah. exercise. And I, I encourage everybody, if, they, if, if, if they're not meditating, to try an app called One Giant Mind. So that's Mm. the number one, Giant Mind. It's an amazing app that teaches people with really busy minds, teaches them how to meditate. Yeah, wow. And And I encourage every single one of my clients to use that app as the starting point for meditation. Mm. And and there's a 12 step, 12 day process. That's free. Yeah. 
12, cool. 12 step process on there. Teach yep. them how to meditate. It'll help big nice. time. Oh, look, I'll make sure that I include that in, uh, in today's show notes and, uh, ensure that that's there. Um, Greg, um, we're, we're going to run out of time soon, um, but you've been pretty incredible um, and I really appreciate how open you've been with me um, and sharing your story. What's one last thing that you would um, leave with the audience um, to share with them before the end of the year? What's uh, what, 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 what should they be getting ready for? Yeah, I like so many people will be thinking about just getting this last run into Christmas and then taking a break. But then they'll just go back into the same fire next year. And it's those short breaks are important, yeah. but they're not enough. We need to give ourselves short breaks every day and don't make excuses that I'm too busy. You're not too busy to look after yourself, even 10, 15 minutes. Even, even if you have your lunch break and you just go for a walk around the neighborhood and come back and just clear your mind. Because if you give yourself those short breaks every day, you won't so desperately need the long breaks at Christmas holidays, yeah? Mm, yeah. Yeah, awesome. That's so, great. yeah, guys just need to give themselves some some of their, just some them time. Yeah, perfect. Greg Gillies from the Evolve CEO, thank you so much for today. I really appreciate it. Um, um, thank you again, and um, we'll uh, can't wait to connect again in the future. Totally. Thanks for having me, Mark. Cheers, mate. Cheers, buddy.